So in this video, we are going to install my MIDI keyboard. I just did a video about what is a MIDI keyboard, right? So in short, a MIDI keyboard is just a type of MIDI controller and we plug it in with a USB cable, okay? And so USB gives us our power as well as sending MIDI data. So again, a MIDI keyboard has no sounds in it. So if we press a key by itself, it, there's nothing happening, but it triggers a note inside of our music program. So when we open up FL Studio, it triggers a note allowing us to play our virtual instruments or whatever sounds we have loaded up. So again, for myself, again, I have tried quite a few MIDI keyboards over my years and I always look for a 49 key MIDI keyboard. So 49 keys, semi-weighted, that means that when you push the keys, they just feel a little bit better. Making sure to have the transport buttons like this. So we have play, stop, record, forward a bar, back a bar, and the loop button for FL Studio, okay? When you have the loop button, you have a really, really good experience when you switch between song and pattern mode. So I just wanna stress that I personally really like a 49 key for the reason being that it's smaller, it's also more affordable, it fits really good on the desk, and I could put my audio interface right to the side so I can control volume for a really, really fast workflow. A lot of newer producers think the 61 key because they're gonna have more keys to play. It's gonna make them a better producer. Again, you guys can check my YouTube channel or my Piano Lessons for Producers course. I have been playing piano as a beat maker for many years and a 49 key is what I recommend to you guys because you have to understand when you're actually playing your melodies as a producer, it's usually like your first melody is with two hands. And then a lot of your stuff is really just with one hand afterwards. So it's not like you need tons of keys. Um, and then again, you have your octave buttons to go up and down uh, your, you know, for more keys. So I'm telling you, it gives you a phenomenal experience. The only tricky thing with the 49 key is finding the semi-weighted keys in that model. So again, I'm just going to install this M Audio Oxygen Pro with a USB cable right here. So I'll just clear off this little uh, compartment here. And then again, I already have my USB cable ready to go. Okay, so installation is really, really simple. Uh, usually best practice is going on to their website, whatever product, you know, whatever manufacturer, install the driver first, then you plug it in, turn it on, and you should be good to go. All right, so I'm gonna be installing two cables actually in this MIDI keyboard. So I have my pedal, okay? And then I have a USB cable. So the USB cable is the power as well as uh, MIDI data. And then uh, this is just a pedal for the MIDI keyboard for that sustain. And again, I don't use it when I'm actually recording because it makes it really, really annoying for recording. I use this for practicing. So when we play our notes and let go, it could be really, really short sounding. And so if you push down your pedal as you're playing, your notes are longer and it can kind of give you a little bit more inspiration as you're playing if it sounds a lot more musical. So I can pull up my keyboard tray. I can place it on there nice and easy. So all connections are over here. And again, it does have that on and off switch, which was really, really nice to have. So there goes USB power. And then this only has the one port. So sometimes you have a sustain. Sometimes you also have the expression pedal. Uh, so there you go. So that's it. Really, really simple to set up, right? Now, the biggest thing for me for this cable is I just want to make it so when it pulls out, so you can see there's some tension. So I'll have to go back in behind and just kind of give that a little bit more um, slack so that I can pull this out further. And once I do that, Good to go. I think the studio will be back up and running. So uh, studio is a little bit messy right now because just doing all these dif different videos and getting set up. Uh, but wow, I'm very, very excited to finally just make beats myself and then get back into training. So again, you guys can visit me over at itsgratuitous.com. This was, I think the last video, I I'll probably just do one more wrap up video about everything we've learned so far. If you've been following along, I hope you have enjoyed. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you learned about you know, how to save money, how to be careful when it comes to different brands. Because again, if you're going to recommend a brand, um, brands change over time. So it's not like, for example, M Audio, um, for the most part, they've always done me good. Um, I had an audio interface. It was not good. But the speakers I used to have, which I wish I didn't sell, because again, it's really good for training. If I would have kept my equipment, it's good for training, as well as because my audio interface is able to do two banks of speakers, I would have had this and my five inch speakers to switch between. I wouldn't even have needed this, this little mono speaker. But 
that's the way I'm set up right now. And you can see my other MIDI keyboard, the one I used to use, was also by M Audio. This was the Axiom. This was the second generation. Again, 49 key is what I recommend to you guys. More affordable, fits better on the desk, and gives you tons of keys to play with, and you can use your um, octave buttons. Again, the only thing that was failing with this was the octave buttons. Otherwise, I don't think I would have purchased a new MIDI keyboard. All right, so that is how you set up a MIDI keyboard. Just a USB cable, plugs into the computer, make sure to install the drivers, and then turn it on. That's usually best practice, but you can just plug it and turn it on. You'd be good to go. Uh, as you can see, the 49 key is what I really, really like. Um, all right, and again, there's my uh, beat making books if you'd like to check them out. I'll quickly say, if you're new to FL Studio, you can check the beginner's book. And if you wanna learn to make drum loops, I really, really would like to get my safe spots training out there. It's all about creating drum loops. It's a really, really thick book, you'll see. So a lot, a lot of pages in safe spots. There's also a course and you would also want to get the sounds, the drum bundle trio sounds so that you get the best drum loop training experience. Okay. So again, visit me over at itsgratuitous.com. I hope you enjoyed this um, MIDI keyboard setup and I'll talk to you in the next video. Are you looking for an easy way to learn how to actually make beats with FL Studio? Check out my FL Studio beginners book. Just go to itsgratuitous.com forward slash beginner.